The racing at the start of the Prada Cup was full on from the start and full of plenty of surprises. Not least of all, Ineos Team UK coming out of their yard on fire and taking the first and all of the subsequent races. But as it turned out, the real story about this opening phase was about this team, American Magic, and their dramatic capsize. Among all the discussion and debate that's been surrounding the incident and the implications that it has for this team and possibly for the other challengers, there was something that struck me about the whole incident. And that was it reminded me of the number of times I've heard stories in the, in the classes that I race in of people who've lost championships because of a bad tack or a capsize after a jibe on the last leg. Most of them managed to shrug it off and come back next year. No one down here was shrugging off American Magic's incident. But it was a reminder that even though they're at the top end of the sport with multi-million pound campaigns, sometimes things aren't that different. So with this team working frantically to get back into the game in time for the semi-finals, it is perhaps inevitable that the event will change for Luna Rossa and Ineos Team UK. Both will be considering what a change in the schedule might mean, and with that, what it might mean for their strategies going forwards. After all, that is the nature of the America's Cup, where every aspect is scrutinised for potential benefits. But in the quest for success with team budgets of over 100 million apiece, it's easy to think that the sailors are hardcore, ice-cool pros and not like us at all. But when American Magic skipper Terry Hutchinson faced the press to tell us what had happened and what it would mean for the future, the human side slipped through. You know, I, I was trying to eject out of my spot and you know, we ended up with knives out, cutting ourselves out and making sure you know, the first priority is getting the crew out. And you know, fortunately we were all out, I think probably within a minute underneath the mainsail. You know, it's, it's unnerving to say the least and yeah. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, these boats are amazing machines, and the teams have learnt to sail them incredibly quickly. But this particular incident was a sharp reminder of just how quickly things can go wrong. I don't know much about what happened. I've seen a video of the manoeuvre, and it's just horrific, you know, and you don't want to see that for, for anyone, uh, you know, either your own team or any other team. You know, we, we are going out there racing hard against one another, but you know, at the end of the day, it's a sporting contest and we want everyone to be safe and we want everyone to be racing. So I just, you know, I feel for those guys, for Dean and Terry, the rest of the team, and I really hope they're able to sort things out and get back on track. No one wants to see that. Well, um, the conditions were very hard and uh, I mean, it's not no surprise that there was a cup size. It was very puffy and gusty, uh, still some chop behind. Um, and uh, very hard maneuvers to do because it was almost a one-way track. So the Americans decided to do a tech better way, which is a uh, very hard maneuver to pull off on those conditions. Uh, they were brave, um, uh, but I mean, I feel sorry for them. But apart from this particular incident, one of the other big talking points was Ineos Team UK's remarkable turnaround in their performance. Normally, teams are reluctant to describe any detail about what they've been doing to their boat. But that wasn't the case when Ben was asked just before the start of the round robin what they've been up to. Got a new rudder, a new elevator, a new mast, a new mainsail, new headsails. <laughs> we've put aero, aero modifications to the hull and we've changed the systems to the hull, so we've been quite busy. Max Serena, the skipper of Luna Rossa, was less inclined to tell us what they'd been up to, but he did reinforce the pressure to improve. You cannot think to stop to, to improve your boat uh, today because otherwise you're going to finish last. So this is how the first stage of the Prada Cup played out. Round Robin 1 and 2. The road to the 36th America's Cup has taken racing into new territory. Boat speeds of 30 to 40 knots are the new normal, but the intensity has taken everyone by surprise. Few had anticipated the roller coaster of changing fortunes. In just three days of racing for round robin one and two, the tables had turned once again. 
After the opening race of round robin one, Ineos were the talk of the town with their dominant win over American Magic. Just two weeks earlier, they were struggling to finish. Oh, it feels a little bit better than six losses or whatever it was. So, yeah, we left a little bit late, but uh, managed to find the pace when it counts on time in this breeze. Two. A second victory against Luna Rossa, then a third over American Magic again. The British were on a roll. But so too was American Magic, in the opposite direction. After the America's Cup World Series, many saw them as the favourites in the Challenger camp. They knew their boat was fast, but now any signs of that had disappeared. In the first two days of round robin one and two, it was loss after loss. First to Ineos, then to Lunarossa, before losing again to the British. Something had changed, but no one knew what. We got to just stay patient, um, trust in ourselves, trust in our team, which we do, and uh, keep chipping along. There's a lot of meat left on this bone, so we're going to keep fighting. Meanwhile, Lunarossa Prada Pirelli sat in the middle, confident in their light wins performance and building on their capabilities in stronger wins. Were the Italians the new datum? With such dramatic change in fortunes on either side of them, it was hard to tell. Or perhaps both Luna Rossa and Ineos had stepped up a gear and left the Americans behind. And then, in the last race of Round Robin 2, drama. American Magic had found their feet. They were just one leg away from beating Luna Rossa, one leg away from a point, one key manoeuvre from restoring their form. 40 seconds before uh, we tacked, it was blowing 12 and a half knots of wind. And when we tacked to bear away, it was blowing 23 and a half knots of wind. Um, and when you look at the wind graph, the, you know, the time from 18 knots to 23 knots is about three seconds. Down the back stays eased, but then the next thing that happens there is the main sheet gets eased, and that loads into the lured runner. That's not the reason that the, um, that the boat tipped over. You know, it was um, a combination of a couple things that led up to that moment. You know, there has never been a waiver in the commitment being from Doug and Hap and Roger and the New York Yacht Club or from our team members. I mean, we're all in this together. But this was more than a capsize. American magic had come close to losing Patriot altogether. You know, we're going 47 knots or something. And there's transverse uh, structure inside the boat and then there's a longitudinal structure. And so the boat... Uh, when you look at it in slow-mo, you know, popped quite a wheelie. The lured foil came out of the water and we got a, a reasonable amount of bow out altitude up. And when the boat slammed down, it's fine if it slams flat on its keel. Uh, but when you land on the side on the flat panel, basically the uh, structure inside the yacht just guillotined the panel. In seriousness, it'll be a big effort to get the boat to go sailing for the semis. And we have a realistic timetable. We have great support from the... Auckland Maritime and boat building community to help us. Uh, we've had great support from all the teams. You know, everybody has offered up their services to get Patriot back on the water. I think what we're going to see over the next, you know, eight to ten days is the boat get rebuilt, and she might not come out of the shed as pretty, but she's going to come out of the shed, and we're going to get back into racing. The first round of the Prada Cup had left two teams in a race against each other, and one racing the clock. So what next? Well, the chatter is that going into round robin one, American Magic were pretty convinced that they had the fastest boat of the challengers. Who would blame them? They'd certainly done incredibly well in, in the America's Cup World Series before Christmas. Well, that clearly wasn't the case. They struggled to put any points on the board at all. But now they've got a challenge of a very different kind. They're going to spend the next couple of weeks rebuilding their boats, trying to get out on the water in time for the semi-finals. And I just wonder whether that will change their focus. They'll be really up against it. But when you look back at America's Cup history, sometimes that does the trick. Look at what Oracle did back in 2013, and I'm not necessarily referring to their comeback. Months before that, admittedly well before they got into the competition, they capsized their cat. That set the campaign back quite a way. Then leap forward to 2017. What about the Kiwis? They capsized their cat as well and had a day to fix it. They did get back out there and they won the cup. 
Now clearly I'm not suggesting that it's going to be easy for these guys to recover, it's certainly not. But past history does suggest that nothing is impossible, at least not yet.